I recently got my um, Fat Shark goggles, FPV goggles, that allow me to uh, look out the camera on my quad. So uh, this is now set up for um, FPV. So I've got the transmitter on the top, a camera mounted on the front and power at the back. But what I've done recently is I've also started playing with telemetry using the Easy OSD system. And looking online and looking on YouTube, there's very little information about how you connect the system um, to your PC and to the iPhone and to some of the other bits and pieces as well. So I figured it all out and I thought it would be useful to kind of document what uh, you do to get it all working so that other people don't have to go through the same trial and error. So what I'm going to do in the next 5-10 uh, minutes is show you how you um, use the Immersion RC Easy OSD with uh, the goggles and also then how you use the goggles and capture the telemetry information on both the iPhone and the Immersion PC app as well which allows you to record but also to actually um, track your model in flight or when you finish the flight to actually view it again in virtual reality. First of all let's have a look at the actual basic Fat Shark system. So this is a uh, 5.8 gigahertz system uh, connected here so there's a camera on the front on a little homemade mount. I've actually got the um, servo mount on its way so that using the transmitter I can either look out or look slightly down. I find looking out all the time is difficult to orientate yourself towards the ground. It's fine for flying but when you're coming into land it can be a little bit interesting. Um, this is the transmitter on the top. Uh, the transmitter has uh, two connections on the back. One of them comes from the camera and the other one comes from this little power module here that plugs into the balance tap on the battery. Um, that then transmits at uh, 5.8 gigahertz. The reason I'm using 5.8 is that I'm a Spectrum RC um, user for the transmitter and you have to use a different frequency to the one that you're using to transmit on. So the transmit and receive for control is 2.4 gigahertz and the Fat Shark video system is transmitting on 5.8. So that means that um, they don't interfere with each other. Now to actually put the Easy OSD system um, on the model is really straightforward. This is designed to be plug and play with the Fat Shark system, uh, which is good because I didn't want to have to get the soldering iron out and I'm relatively new to FPV so I didn't want to have to figure it all out from scratch. So what happens here is there's this, li this little piece which is a current sensor. Um, let's see if you can read that on the screen. It's a 100 amp current sensor. So obviously it fits into the um, battery and the model so it can actually do two things. One is actually power the camera and the system and secondly it can actually measure the amps that you're pulling as part of the, the uh, display. And then this part is actually the brains. So there is a um, three buttons on the top to access and configure the menu. There is a GPS receiver and there's uh, ports on the bottom. So you've got the, whoop, the cable that goes into the transmitter and you've got the in cable that comes from the camera and then you've got the battery the, the replacement lead that goes into the um, transmitter to power everything so it's uh, very very simple to install so to actually install it I'll actually do it on the camera apologies for this so what I'm going to do I'm going to from the transmitter unplug the cable from the camera and unplug the power. This is a little stiff, there we go. And then for this system, I plug the camera into the video in. And appreciate this isn't all set to fly with it, but for illustration purposes, it'll be fine. You put the video out into the transmitter and you take the power from the current sensor and plug that into the transmitter and bingo. Now if I plug the battery into here the system will all power up, I'll get the video from the transmitter but actually now I'll also get the on-screen display information, GPS, heading, voltage, amps, milliamp hours, all that jazz will come from this machine. 
So what I'll do now is I'll actually move it across, we'll power it up and um, show you how you connect the glasses to the iPhone so that you can actually track the telemetry information. So now I've powered the model up, it's um, currently acquiring the satellites, it might not work because we're uh, indoors, it needs a clear view of the sky for the GPS to lock in. If I power up the goggles by just plugging in the battery pack to the side, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, kind of ish, but we're actually looking out of the uh, model and hopefully you can see at the bottom left 12.4 volts some other bits and pieces so I'm receiving all the telemetry information as well now on these goggles there are a number of ports so you have the um, AV out on the side by the power port and then underneath you have the earphone connection now what's actually happening at the moment is uh, I haven't got any um, sound stuff plugged in here but there's a pulsing tone coming down on the right audio channel which actually contains all of the telemetry information now on the iPhone itself there's actually an application called iTelemetry FPV and if I start that I'll just take it back so you can read a little bit um, we'll click on telemetry and at the moment it's picking up my voice level and it's saying there's, lot, there's bad packets so what you do to do this to connect the iPhone to be able to see the telemetry data is with the, the uh, goggles this is the cable that comes in the box which allows you to connect the goggles using the video output that we looked at into three RCA connectors now what you also need is a special little cable to actually connect the iPhone to the um, to the RCA connector. So what you do is you plug the connector into the port. You'll then need one of these little devices because we need to connect a male well, the same side connectors for the RCA bits and pieces, so we'll plug them into there. So that's video, and those are the two audio channels. The audio channel that the telemetry is transmitted on is the right channel, which is red. And then you plug this cable into the top of the iPhone. And now if I zoom in, what you should see is we're now getting good packets of information. So the telemetry information is actually now on the screen so I can see that it's 12.43 volts I can see the current that I'm pulling which is nothing because I haven't got any volts um, any um, motors connected I can see the plane's location where I launched from and where I am I can see the speed I can see all the bits and pieces I can even if I click on a map it will actually show me where I am in uh, both myself and the plane in relative position. Now the great thing about this of course is that it means that not only if I zoom back out, not only do I have a separate view and I can actually save this telemetry information um, as I uh, let's overwrite the existing file I can actually save the telemetry information as I fly so I can view it later but it means I can also if I God forbid I lose the plane then I can actually go and find it because the telemetry link here will tell me exactly where it is and I can use Google Maps on the iPhone to go and locate it. The um, thing you have to be careful of with this if we go into the settings menu I'm not sure if you can see this very well but telemetry speed is slow normal and fast this has to match the setting on the easy OSD because if it doesn't then uh, you will not get it picking up the information it's basically the speed of the transmission so those blips how fast they're coming and the uh, the board rate essentially as they come down so if you set this up and you can't see the telemetry saying good packets then go into settings click on the telemetry speed to match the OSD and you should get that information so now what we'll do is we'll show how to connect a PC and the Immersion RC app so you can actually see live on Google Earth the telemetry data so I'll start the Immersion player here we go, Immersion RC 
and the thing that you use to cable is a very standard cable for this bit. You don't need a special cable, all you need is one that has a 3.5 millimeter stereo jacks at each end and you put one into the line in or microphone slot on your laptop and the other one goes into the headphone socket on the bottom and now if we click on live capture and click on can you hear that? that is the noise that chattering coming down the right hand channel of the audio with all the telemetry information in now interestingly on my setup what I have to do is on the screen here let me actually do a um, capture of the screen so you can see it more the swap left right audio channel it's showing that I, I'm not actually picking up any packets at all if I swap the channels round then suddenly I can actually read the telemetry information and I can actually do things like click on pilot's eye view and that will launch Google Earth to the right hand side of the app and using the GPS and telemetry data that's coming from the Easy OSD display via the goggles it'll actually show me where on the earth I am here we are, let's change the uh, plane icon because it isn't that let's use generic and there it is, it's actually showing where I am, the direction and everything else so not only can you listen to it live you can also load in an audio file and you can actually see the uh, the flight in real time so this is um, showing that I've um, yeah pretty much bang on looking at the, out the back window of the house over the canal so hopefully that helps so it's a standard audio cable and uh, you don't have to play with the volume too much the only thing you just have to be careful of if you can't see anything on the display click on the swap left right audio button hopefully that's helpful thanks very much for watching um, any comments or questions please post them and subscribe